Hey everybody, this is Perch, and we're looking at July's uh, solicitations for comics. And this, in this case, we're looking for Marvel. We're looking at Marvel in July. So uh, we'll run through everything they've got going on. A bit of context here. Uh, Marvel is, you know, basically in this position where they've got the Penguin Random House deal. It feels like they're trying to slide some of their bigger events and their, their things that are going to pop really big numbers into October. So they can take advantage of that deal and, and pop some bigger numbers. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. But, uh, you know, I, I expect that August, September uh, looks a little bit like uh, spinning wheels to some extent. I don't mean that as negative as it sounds. Just just kind of trying to line some things up so they can go big in October. That's that's what I believe we'll see uh, coming out of uh, Marvel. But, but, but we'll, we'll see. Of course, we will get nothing out of DC because they, they're stopping publishing comics in July. Uh, that, that got me some down votes. Oh. Anyway, let's get to actual comics. Amazing Fantasy, uh, one of five. Kari Andrews, I mean, obviously he's been on this show and a uh, huge, huge fan of Kari Andrews. So I, I absolutely, I cannot wait uh, for what this is going to bring together. This looks incredible. It, it reminds me of, of, of absolutely the things that uh, you used to get kind of from the Epic line and other places. Uh, this looks great, uh, 100%. Um, you know, <laughs> they wait, basically your, your iconic heroes wake up uh, on an island of intrigue, darkness, and amazing fantasy. Um, yeah, I, I, I cannot wait for this. I think this will be an amazing, amazing comic. Uh, Sinister War, number one of four. This is uh, basically a, a Spider-Man cross. We just got through with the uh, the clone conspiracy or the the chameleon conspiracy. I, I we, there's so many Spider-Man events. It's it's monthly at this point. There's these little monthly kind of things going on. But here we're getting a Sinister War, which I believe is the Sinister Six against the Savage Six um, as a you know battle of villains. Uh, what's interesting here is we do have a cover by um, Brian Hitch, who has been DC exclusive for a while, uh, or at least mainly doing DC work. So it's it's interesting to see that uh, that he's got the, the the primary cover, not the variant. Uh, so maybe we're going to see more Marvel work. Uh, there's a couple sites are reporting that Brian Hitch has a has a secret Marvel project coming up, so we can look for that. But anyway, Doc Ock versus the Vulture and their their team of. Uh, of sinister savages uh is that the way mark bagley on art nick spencer um here's issue two of that sinister war um lots of uh, spider-man mill this is one of those cases where you kind of just hope spider-man gets out of the way and we get just a nice big fight between villains that that would be that would be nifty um over amazing spider-man number 70 oh no kindred's doing things again um no and so we had the uh, king's ransom event the chameleon conspiracy event uh so you know here's here's more more shenanigans, uh, and then Kindred is, is hanging out here. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of people feel frustrated by what, what they say is a bait and switch. I've thought it, that the Kindred storyline would come to some level of resolution uh, with issue 50, and uh, or at least this, this last uh, Kindred storyline, and, and it was just kind of part one. There's clearly more Kindred to come. So it, I guess it's, it's nice that you've got a villain people care about. Uh, that, that they're anxious to get some reveals on. So that's good. So uh, then we have, uh, here's Amazing Spider-Man number 71 because we're shipping, uh, we're double shipping. Um, this is, uh, you know, what is Kindred's role in all this? It, it's all Kindred. <laughs> At this point, it is good that Kindred stuck and that people like that character because if not, they'd be screwed. Um, then we get Extreme Carnage Alpha. This is coming into the other uh, Spider-Verse style event. Uh, this is Extreme Carnage, the start of this storyline, Philip Kennedy Johnson on this. And uh, this is, uh, you know, basically the the Life Foundation, the symbiote scream, uh, page, riot, lasher, and agony. Uh, how do they fit in in the new post-King and Black uh, world? And Carnage is going to be there. Uh, Flash Thompson, Venom, uh, in theory, that's who that is. So, so he'll be back. And then we have Extreme Carnage Scream number one, focusing on Scream. Here's uh, Phage number one. Here's, uh, this is just going to blow up all the number ones for this month. <laughs> um, X-Men number one. Yes, it's a relaunched X-Men with Gary Duggan, Pepe Larraz, and lots of variant covers. Holy cow. Uh, especially the very popular TBA. Uh, those are those are always some of the best. Uh, when this is said and done, this X Men number one will have uh, have a good twenty variant covers. They're they're you know the, the goal here is to pop two hundred thousand in sales. Will they do it? Uh, maybe 
with this amount of variance, it's it's certainly possible. But X Men number one featuring the new team, uh, Laura Wolverine. Uh, we've got Sync in here, Polaris, who won the vote. Uh, you know, thanks, thanks Marvel for spoiling that. Here's Sunfire. It'll be nice to see Sunfire on a team again. Um, you know, hopefully this is just, uh, hopefully this gets to some of the storylines that we've been teasing up around, uh, the Sentinel program and uh, all that kind of like, yeah, hopefully that's, that's where we're going. Um, we desperately need to have some of that. I mean, it's a very action filled cover, but, uh, you know, Pepe Laura's great art style talent. <clears throat> Moon Knight, number one. Uh, this is Jed McKay's uh, crack at the character. Got to get this out in time for the Disney Plus series. Uh, again, lots of variant covers. Got to pop that 100,000 mark for the uh, for the series. Um, the Mysterious Mr. Knight is Midnight Mission. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like... it's. It, I read some of the storylines. I don't think it will be this, but it, the, the setup sounds a lot like uh, how they were setting up Sherlock, the BBC series. I, I doubt it will have anything remotely resembling that, but... Uh, uh, you know, it, it's nice to see Moon Knight coming back. I, they, Moon Knight's a character that desperately needs. Oh, here's here's John Romita Jr. doing. That's a weird. Like, what is going on with his leg there? That's a that's a very weird uh, JRJR uh, cover. But anyway, yikes! I can't, sorry, I can't I can't unsee it now. What what is what is going on? Okay. Anyway, I, I'd love to see a good solid Moon Knight comic. Uh, here's a similar edition of Werewolf by Night. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Annual. Uh, this is Infinite Destinies. This is where uh, you know somebody related to the inf the Infinity Stones is crossing over, and um, you know the the next can't miss installment. I, most people are missing this. Uh, let's let's be honest. Uh, so Star, the, the what they keep calling the breakout character Star. I I, I don't okay. Why why not? Um, in Thor, we've got uh, you know good old. Oh, this is an annual. Sorry, this is. Thor annual, Aaron Cooter, uh, writing and, and, and drawing. So that's, that's, that's nifty. Uh, but this is a Thor versus Thor. Um, this looks like, uh, a, a old Thor, dark twisted Thor. Sorry. Uh, the iron fisted ruler of the realms against current Thor. Uh, sure. No Donny Cates here. This is Aaron Cooter. Um, and then here's symbiote Spider-Man crossroads. Number one, the next, uh, five issue installment of this, uh, symbiote Spider-Man series by Peter David and Greg Land. This is just solid reading. I mean, it's, I don't know. They brought in, uh, Monica Rambeau to be, to be, uh, you know, spectrum, uh, for a while. That was, that was nifty. So, uh, this is the fourth, I believe, uh, of the symbiote Spider-Man series. So here we're, uh, we're going to the crossroads dimension, I guess the psychedelic, Looks like the Incredible Hulk is there in a story set before Peter David's run on the Hulk series. So, all right. Okay, I'm into it. Um, here's the United States of Captain America number two. We talked about this. This is the Captain America who's missing half of her pants. Uh, that's that's what this is. I, I understand it's modeled after uh, uh, the uh, the athlete, but it still is kind of still kind of weird. Like you, you should protect your, your pants. Like you 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 you. you you understood you need to protect half of your pants. So you should, you should, you know, it's like your left leg's important too, man. Left legs, come on. They, 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 I'm not going to make the joke. Uh, okay. Uh, Gamma Flight, uh, number two, the spinning off from the Immortal Hulk. We've got some mystery character here, uh, in the future, uh, or in the, in the cover. Who is this, uh, character? Scar, maybe? From the, the hair and the wilds? Anyway. Uh, Al Ewing and Crystal Frazier co-writing this, uh, Land Medina on art. Alien number five, Philip Kennedy Johnson. Um, aliens, aliens making trouble like they do. Um, and here, here's Aliens Aftermath by Ben Percy. So the second of the Aliens books. Uh, since we can't have Predator until October, we'll just uh, continue to kind of hang out a little bit um, here. So Ben Percy telling his alien story. Uh, the Trials of Ultraman, number four or five. This is a solid little title, by the way, if you're reading it. It's good stuff. It's been late, uh, I think, but Ultraman's uh, fun. Carnage, Black, White, and Blood, which, you know, is another way of just saying, you know, they, they're, they're using red ink along with the, the black ink. So Shang-Chi, number three, Jin Lun Yang. Got to get this out uh, to push for the movie. Where, uh, when, when you need some sales, you throw in Wolverine. So Wolverine is, is guest starring here. 
Uh, X-Men Legends. This is uh, the, starting a new storyline, and this is Peter David reprising his X-Factor uh, world with Todd and Yuck. Um, I, man, they're, 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 I would have wished they would have grabbed some of the, like the Larry Stroman um, to do the art, just to fully give me some X-Factor uh, feels from the uh, from the Peter David run, but um, yeah, this could be quite solid. I like the X-Men Legends run. Uh, the Wheezy uh, book I got a glimpse at, and uh, I'm all over that. So that that's just, this is this is some solid, good storytelling. I, I appreciate that they're doing this. Like, if, if I can't, if I'm going to get this, then please give me this. That's, that's just all I'm asking. So X-Corp, number three. Um, Teeny Howard's uh, The Mutants in, in Office Politics. What are they doing with Madrox? Like, I'm just reminded, like like Madrox uh, during Peter David's X Factor run was so cool of a character. They they did so much development, and now in current X Men they've got him like uh, serving drinks for the Hellfire Gala and just being a basically a duplicate. You know, uh, it, I hate I hate with, I hate what they've done with Madrox, but but here we've got Doctor Jamie Madrox, the world's best boss. So maybe maybe we're getting a better multiple man. Come on, Teeny Howard, give me to give me to really compliment you. If you can crank out a good Jamie Madrox, I will I will sing your praises. That would, that'd be that'd be wonderful. Uh, Way of X number four. Uh, hey, Legion's on the cover. Who would have imagined that? Well, I I think I said when Way of X was announced that uh, Legion was going to be in that book, and I got a lot of people telling me that that was impossible in the comments for no apparent reason. So, uh, ha ha. How about that? All right. So Nightcrawler, um, you know, Krakoa, uh, you know, catastrophes and and other things. Um, cool. Kill no man. Some exceptions may apply. Well, well probably not. Are you going to go hang out with Sabretooth down there in prison? Uh, just kidding. This is Xavier versus Legion in a boozed up tiki bar. <sighs> and damn it. We see so much of the blob now as the, the tiki bar bartender. I, I anyway, Children of the Atom number five. Uh, here the somebody's out for revenge in the X Men. You'll never guess who. Uh, you know the children of the X Men. The these the uh, the people who want to be mutants but they're cosplaying as mutants and and then the rest of the X Men acting super creepy. I, I'm sorry. It, it's the the uh, the X Men having big dialogues about uh, you know we need to bring them to the island. Like nothing makes the X Men sound more off than this book uh, for me right now. That's you know just so uh, Hellions. Uh, Hellions had a brief hiatus, so now we're back, and we're getting Sinister versus Sinister, his clone. Uh, they're still farting around with the cape, so okay. Uh, Sword. This is a crossover, the Last Annihilation with Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Victor Von Doom uh, is staying for dinner. Apparently he was invited to Hellfire Gala, I guess, or maybe he just shows up. I don't know. Last Annihilation. Uh, Wolverine, uh, Ben Percy, Adam Kubert, uh, Stolen Goods, Torch Ship, you know. Oh, we're getting back to Solemn. All right. So Solemn uh, shows up and, uh, and and some shenanigans. Solemn, one of the good parts from Ten of Swords uh, was the introduction of that character. X-Force, uh, is this man thing? Certainly looks like a uh, man thing, but they're calling it uh, man slaughter. Man, man, man. Uh. All right, new mutants number twenty. Um, bring in Farouk. So uh, here is the in the heart of the wild hunt. Um, the dead are walking. Does it, these solicitations always indicate that somebody hasn't really read the issue yet? So it's like schemers are dreaming, deceptions coming to light. Dead are walking. Okay. Just another day. Uh, I have the Shadow King, sure. Uh, this would be a good storyline to run back when uh, Legion, the TV show, was on. Uh, just, just pointing out. Uh, here's some Marauders. I could swear we've seen this cover before, uh, but but we haven't. It's it's like the White King with some chess. Uh, the, sorry, the White Queen, Emma Frost, with some chess pieces. I think Saturnine had a similar cover. It just, it feels like we've seen this cover uh, a lot. So what's what's Gary Duggan up to with Marauders? Um, the Hellfire Gala may be over, but the flames of Hellfire Pass come looking at the... Okay. Uh, Excalibur. Oh, Betsy's in chains and there's a pig guy. Um, Captain Britain, Excalibur United. Rogue is off off on the new X-Men team. So apparently she's... Why why don't they keep Rogue and Gambit together in one book? That that seems like a would be a smart... Spider-Woman number 13. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. They put her back in the other costume. I'd love to know some of the reasoning behind that, but, um, 
Lady Deathstroke, Spider Woman. I always feel like when they bring in Lady Deathstroke, it's because they have a, uh, a female character and they, they, they like, we need a strong female character to fight the female character. That Lady Bullseye is, you know, an interesting ish character, but. It always feels like, uh, you know, she's brought in. It's kind of like when wrestling, when they when uh, they got a female wrestler, and it's like, well, they they have to fight another female wrestler. You know, you can't have them fighting a man. But every now and then, they'd like have, uh, you know, like Beth Phoenix go in there and just beat the living hell out of a bunch of men, and that was that was always fun. Uh, I, sorry, I went off track there a little bit. Black Cat number eight, the Infinity Score. Black Cat get the Infinity Gauntlet. That's gonna be good. Um, all right. Uh, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man number 28. Uh, are we still in the Clone Saga? Yes, we are. It's reaching its cataclysmic conclusion. Uh, so, you know, Miles has trouble getting to class on time. Why not? Spider Shadow number four. This is Chip Zdarsky doing a What If story. This is part of What If. Um, it's weird that they're not doing fully that branding of What If. But this is a What If story. Uh, Peter is free. This is what if he kind of embraced a symbiote, um, you know, and, and they're, they're doing ongoing what if comics. Nonstop Spider-Man. Chris Bacalo is still on the art, so I, I lost that bet. Uh, five issues in. Uh, looks like he's getting chucked out of a plane. So, uh, you know. Um, okay, there's something we've been teasing you along. Really a trick from both you and Spider-Man. All right. I mean, it'd be nice if the trick was like a cheaper cover price. That's three ninety nine. I guess I, I I can't complain. Avengers number forty six. Uh, we are moving away from the Heroes Reborn Squadron Supreme arc into World War She Hulk, where uh, She Hulk is is declared a global menace. Why? We'll find out. Uh, Captain Marvel number thirty. Uh, Kelly Thompson, uh, Jamie McKelvey. Uh, is our is, is sharing the writing duties Jamie McKelvey on art so we're getting a oversized issue I think we're getting a Kelly Thompson story and a Jamie McKelvey story not the two of them writing something together but um, anyway the oversized 30th issue anniversary I guess that is a, an anniversary um, issue at that point but anyway um, she's uh, she's learning magic she's sleeping with Doctor Strange so she's learning magic I do you need Captain Marvel to also know magic I, all right. Uh, Iron Man number 10. Are we still fighting Korvac? Yes, we are. Uh, he's he's always on an unknown planet, and uh, he's fighting Korvac. And... Fantastic Four number 34. Uh, this is the wedding aftermath. Uh, Doctor Doom is uh, the bride of Doom conclusion. One of his actions will change life forever in a profound way. In a, prof in a profound way. What is the profound way? I, I don't know. Uh, let's take a wild guess. He, he cures Ben Grimm. He, I, I, Black Widow, number nine. This is a decent title. Uh, Kelly Thompson, uh, Black Widow, her team, learn source of powers. They're hanging out in San Francisco. Eternals, number six. Uh, this this title, it, it because it, it was delayed and then uh, there's been so many issues, it's, it's almost kind of comical. Um, you know, Thanos loses, everybody lose. Never die, never win. All right. Um, this this book badly needs some injection of marketing or energy before the movie comes out because uh, it's it's dying on the shelf to some extent. Uh, final issue of Mech Strike, where the Avengers get uh, Lego mechs. Uh, Black Knight Curse of the Ebony Blade, number five. That first issue was decent. So, um, yeah, Black Knight's fine. Again, try to get this out uh, for the Eternals movie. Uh, so ending a little bit early. Uh, Guardians of Galaxy, number 16. Who will annihilate them all? Annihilus. Let's 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 do that. Um, this is again part of uh, Last Annihilation. Yeah, nice Brett Booth cover there. Um, or the the crossover with Sword. Beta Ray Bill number five of five. That's wrapping up. Daniel Warren Johnson. Very good. Now let's get him on another book. Why don't we just put Daniel Warren Johnson on Conan and call it a day, and just have him have him do a long Conan run. That would be that would be great. Uh, here's the final issue of Double Trouble. Uh, Thor and Loki. This is Mariko Tamaki's, I think, only Marvel book uh, right now, where uh, Loki and uh, and Thor body swapped, and then the shenanigans ensue. Thor number fifteen, Dottie Cates. Uh, it is um, you know a battle between Captain America and Thor. Maybe this cover might be misleading. It's a new Midgard shaking arc. Uh, you know, there's tension 
of, uh, of you know, between Odin and Thor. Well, sure there is. Um, issue number four, the penultimate issue of America Chavez's rewriting of her origin. Um, this, the fact that number two has come out and this is July means we're going to have a skip month somewhere in May or June uh, for this comic. Uh, Reptile, number three or four. Oh, yeah, they're making this. Uh, Mighty Valkyries, number four. Yeah, first issue is okay. Not, not great. Uh, Runaways number three. How is this still being published? But, uh, okay. Gert is what it's being said here. Uh, okay. Something, something bad has happened. There's a crash and Gert's responsible. Uh, Champions. Um, th this comic, uh, I, I won't go into A lot of people ask me to do a review of this. This had some of the worst dialogue I, I've ever seen in a comic. Um, they're fighting, anyway, they're fighting Roxon, who's got a mobile, social media app. They should have gone with Rock's face. Over Al Ewing established Rock's face, but this one has Rock's on, because it's Immortal Hulk, uh, number 48, uh, heading toward that 50th issue. Everybody looks sad. Uh, Savage Avengers. Uh, Ghost Rider fights a spider. Uh, Daredevil 32. Electra stands on a building. Conan jumps and... Uh, Star Wars: The High Republic, number seven. Uh, that that the comic is is going. Uh, here's War of the Bounty Hunters, number two of five. Uh, we get all those characters. Job of the Hut uh, as part of War of the Bounty Hunters kind of crossover. So number one issue there. Uh, here's Star Wars number fifteen, also part of this crossover. Uh, who doesn't like Boba Fett? Doctor Afra number fifteen. She's like, what Boba Fett? What? That's what she's saying. Um, and here is uh, here is more about there's a, they're all in on this war of the bounty hunters. Um, here's Darth Vader uh, about to slice somebody up, and that's it. That's what we got for Marvel in new comics. So quite a few. You know, we're averaging I think about 15 issues a week for the month of July. Four weeks in that. So spaced out. You always have at least two, three X books in each week. So there there's that. Uh, everybody always says now do Batman when I complain about there being a lot of X books and and yes There are too many Batman books. Yes, you are correct uh, Anyway, that's what we got for Marvel. What are you buying? What are you picking up? What are you ignoring? Let me know in the comments below like and subscribe and hey